can't do that. Seriously, they won't let you back in. That's ridiculous. That's got to be illegal. He only went to talk to them. Shit. Yes. Dan? Well, what are we going to do? No, no, we're not going to go anywhere. Why would we? They think they can do what they like. They think we're just kids. I know. You're doing it as well, Isabel. <laughs> Dan? Dan? Patrick's dead. So, what's happening? They won't let him in. What? Did they never bring him? Of course they don't. Would you leave? Why? We'd better stay. Cos? I'm not staying. They'll force us out anyway. Guys, come on, why don't we just stick around, stay together, stay strong. They can't knock the building down if we're in here, right? Come on, we'll stay here. It's going to be fun. We'll be here forever. Don't be stupid. Well, I've gone an hour, so I promise. Keep your hands up. We'll keep each other's spirits up. What? I think everyone's just going to be OK with the drama games. Don't knock it, Eliza. People have done powerful things with drama. And music. Really? Can you imagine if you could solve any theatre number with a musical theatre number? Dan? 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 F major, please.
when things are awkward Could singing make it better? You're sweating cause you're nervous And you can't get any wetter
Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Derek. I write the words. Um, one of the things that uh, is in the script that we've got at the moment is there's lots of dialogue, as you've heard, but there are no actual characters. So the, the, the dialogue's just um, just written. There's, it doesn't say who's made to, to speak what, and that's one of the things that we sort out in rehearsal. That they're creating their own characters, and we're sort of allocating the lines as we go along, and there's real ownership. Um, of the script. Some of the work then has been done through improvisation, so some of the work doesn't actually come onto the stage in front of the audience. And we wanted to share some of that work with you, so we've created um, a little dialogue between two of the characters. So this is Eliza and Sarah playing Eliza and Sarah. Are you okay? Yeah. Sure? Yeah, right. Must say, Mitch, I'm not You're always doing this. What? No. There always has to be something wrong. That's not true. I always have to make a drama out of everything. I'm a performing arts student. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come here? Well, I don't know. I mean, you never seem to enjoy it. Well, well, it's just, well, I come here to get release a distraction, you know? Something to do when I'm bored. What do you think of the show? It's fine. It's a bit, it's rubbish. <laughs> it's early days. <laughs> yeah, you really think it's going to get any better? It always does, is it? It usually does, I suppose. Go on, why do you come in? Well, you know, just something to do when I'm bored. Well, what about you? Why do you come in? Well, I guess it's because you're here. What would I do on my own? Yeah. What would you do if you didn't come in? Sit and be bored. What about you? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Just sit in your room? No. Not in that house. Go on. Well, it's just my parents. They don't really like me having to be around. Well, it's not really like that. You know, they want me out of the way for some work. You know, usually I just, well, I have to, um, I just prefer to go somewhere else. Really? But you like performing, Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Well, you're really good at it. You can act, you can sing. So can you? I just don't like being sent to stage. I'd rather just be in a chorus. Really? Yeah, like, you know, when you're singing and everyone's doing their own thing and you're doing your own things. And I love the sound and just being part of something, you know? Yeah, it does sound good when we get it right. <laughs> you do like coming here, though, don't you? Yeah. I just, sometimes I feel like I couldn't fit in anywhere else. Like, I only get accepted here. Yeah. But to be completely honest, I do love it, yeah. Just don't tell the others, don't want to think I'm sorry. <laughs> So we started with material at the beginning of the week that we've been obviously rehearsing. Uh, in addition to that, Michael and I have written a new song during the week. Uh, so it started off with me doing some words on Monday afternoon, Michael setting it to music on Tuesday, me re rewriting the words and sending them to him at 2 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. These guys are learning it, or learning most of it on Wednesday, then us finishing off the song. Um, and then learning the last bit on Thursday. So you can see this has been real work in progress. This is why I got a dot in front of them. Um, it's introducing three new characters. I should say um, it's called Solo Song. <laughs> it's a trio. Um, there are three new characters being introduced here. Cameron's going to sing as Paul Robeson. For those of you who don't know, Paul Robeson was a black American singer and actor who toured the world performing but also speaking out against injustice. A lot of the time um, anti-racist speeches um, but speaking for workers all around the world. So for him the solo song is about the solo voice having the power to get a message worldwide. Um, slightly different artists. We've got Dan who's going to sing as Vincent van Gogh for his solo world. It's him locked in his own room, locked in his own space locked in his own mental illness as he creates this great art that's not recognised in his lifetime. And stage right we've got Maddie, who's going to sing as Emily Dickinson. Again, for those of you who don't know, Emily Dickinson was an American poet who was very, very reclusive, had about two poems published in her lifetime, and they discovered almost 2,000 um, after she died. So we've got a solo song.
reiterate what um, Derek said that Cameron, Danny and Maddie received the final version of that music last night. So they've done an absolutely tremendous job to not only learn it, but to be able to um, put across such really quite difficult characters. And as a song, I think it really encapsulates why art and expression is so important in being a voice singing out to people, but also the challenges, um, the frustrations, the insecurities of being a creative person, as I'm sure any creative people amongst you will know it. It's tough. Um, so our next scene is one that was created this week for one of our members who unfortunately can't be here today. She never left came here today and she contributed heavily um, to the project. She was a real ensemble player. Um, the speech you're about to see and hear is um, one that came out of an activity we did yesterday morning. Um, the activity was we asked um, every participant here to sit around in a circle and they each shared a really honest and heartfelt story about a time when reading a book, listening to a song, being in a play, seeing a play, um, being part of something creative really helped them when they were in a quite a difficult time. Um, now, I don't know if you've ever done an activity like that, but um, it's, it's a really brave thing to do, regardless of age, it doesn't get any easier with age, and every participant here gave each other the utmost respect and support through the exercise. It really got quite emotional, it went on for about two hours, but it was a really um, eye-opener for us, and for the group as well. So the following speech was created as an amalgamation of these stories and touches upon many of the recurring themes of family people's stories. Um, perhaps the most common one was the importance of camaraderie and friendship and meeting other people through theatre. Following the speech will be our final song, You Can't Do That. Now this song began the week with a completely different ending, which we sounded out to the kids and they went, oh no, I don't like it. So the kids actually dictated the ending of this song. They wanted to say something that was much more what they felt was realistic and something that was much more how they felt. Um, when, you, when we get to the end of the song, I'd like you as an audience to really consider why they thought it was an appropriate ending. And I think there's some real questions we need to ask ourselves as adults, parents, teachers and facilitators as to um, why we made that decision. So um, let's see the next scene. Thank you. Sorry I'm not there, I just wanted to send you this message. I wanted to remind you how important all this is. I've been making notes, so... I used to be shy and I used to be really unhappy. I was going through stuff and to make things worse, I was having trouble at school. Uh, people putting me down, knocking my confidence. But I used to listen to music a lot. And there are some songs that I really love because they really describe this how well. Cringe. And a couple of books too, they do the same. Then I saw a show for the first time. And the first live show, and I discovered performance. I knew that that was for me. So, um, that's when I joined the group. I was still really shy and uncomfortable. I felt different <laughs> to everyone at school. I felt weird, well, here, you are all as mad as me. <laughs> you made me feel really welcome and I actually made friends, surprisingly. I started to feel better about myself, I got much more confident, and I remember my first audition. It was the first time I had ever sung a solo in front of everyone. But I did it, and I got the part I wanted. It wasn't one of the biggest parts, but it was. 
I really felt valued and it was like I had respect. And, and the best friends ever, of course. And we really bonded over that show, didn't we? It's really important, this group, guys. You have to remember that. It's important to me and it's important to you. You have to keep our theatre. We have to keep it going. It's important. I can't imagine life without this group and our shows. We have to stick together, right? Good luck. Save the theatre. Some months ago, we issued an order to demolish several buildings to make way for a new, exciting, fresher supermarket. Your theatre is, unfortunately, one of these buildings. We understand that you may be disappointed by this, but the time has now come for you to leave. Your recent protests have been noted, but they must now stop. They are not helpful or sensible. You are, frankly, behaving like silly children. We demand that you stop this embarrassing behaviour and get out of the building now. Our demolition crew will start their work at 4 p.m. on Friday, the 8th of August 2014. Yours, Councillor B. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs>
Mãe, 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 Mãe,